What's up, y'all? This is Cam Johnson, and you're either watching or listening to the Second Wind Podcast. Second Wind family, what's up? Tuning in, man. Thank you for tuning in. We are on our way right now to New York to do uh, actually our first NBA player, Cam Johnson, who plays for the Brooklyn Nets, is the first basketball player that we actually had on our podcast, uh, NBA player. So many key points that we're going to be talking about today, just, you know, him being traded or him playing five years in college and getting four surgeries or playing in the finals. So I think he has a great perspective and uh, a great story, which is why we're doing him today. I want you to be looking sweet. I had to. I got you the new joint from Nike. You going to wear it the first right, episode? Seven, seven, first uh, episode, too. My oh, man got me looking fresh, man. I had to. Duh. NBA player, I got to look fresh, bro. Come on. Can't come out, that bitch. <laughs> Put some dirt on that shit. Bro, I'm in the toilet. It's boo boo in every toilet. Oh, no. I'm walking in the toilet, yeah. boom, boo boo. Walking another toilet, boom, boo boo. <laughs> I'm like, what kind of studio is this with all this shit in the toilet? Oh, oh my god, look at your hair. Oh my gosh, thank you. Nails popping, the hair popping. <laughs> What's up? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Oh, yeah. Wait. You see how I switch up my voice like that? <laughs> it's <doing> sweet. <laughs> yeah, you got to be doing this. Make room, left, right. Killer Cam in the building, man. He might pull up from here. He might, hey, hey, hey. hey Killer Cam in his back, bro. Yeah, bro. Nice to meet you, bro. Nice to meet you, bro. What's up? We can. Before we get into this next episode, we just want to give a huge shout out to all of our fans and subscribers. If you could do us a huge favor, please hit that subscribe, like, and comment button. Again, please hit that like, comment, and subscribe button. We're going to continue to build this platform to the biggest in the world. With that being said, enjoy this next episode. There is no way this works that well. <laughs> why, why are you so happy, bro? What you mean? I can't be happy? Nah, you can be happy. You just a little extra today, though. I'm not being extra. I just got this new thing today that made my boss feel mad smooth. Here, feel this. Damn, that's smooth. It's really like this? That's what it does? That's that manscape, bro. For real, it's like, it's super legit. And last time I didn't use this fool, bro, I was mess I messed my stuff all the way up. Cut myself up. It was really bad. Manscaped, bro, it's the, it's the real deal. Don't tell me that's that lawnmower 4.0. Yeah, bro, and that's that advanced skin safe technology that reduces nicks and cuts. They also got ball deodorant and huh, you'll, you'll like this one, crop spray toner. Well, bro, where can I get me some? Because I know you got that discount code. Come you on, bro, you already know I got everything. You. And I Falls right around the corner, so you know we need fresh balls. Get 20% off and free shipping using code adversity at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping using code adversity at manscaped.com. As the leaves fall, make sure you have it all with Manscaped. I hope you don't know I'm about to use his Manscaped. Yes, sir. Can you see what's going on? Got that Hello Fresh right to the front door. Number one meal kit in America. I didn't have to sit in line for an hour and a half at the grocery store. Didn't have to spend $90 on a $10 burger on Uber Eats. You know how they charge for all the delivery fees and everything. And it's cheaper than groceries because me and Jarvis got y'all a discount. Second win 50, go to hellofresh.com slash second win 50 and get a discount. And I'm gonna even show y'all how to make it later on tonight. Y'all gonna see me chef it up a little bit. You know that song, Adele got where she's like, hello. She just forgot to add the fresh to the end. So I'm gonna show y'all how to really, really, really cook. Me, Chef, and it's that. I told y'all I'd be back, man. Got the Hello Fresh cheeseburger wraps. 20 minutes to make. Easy instructions, and I can't even make toast, so that's how you know it's easy. Go to HelloFresh.com slash second win to get 50% off again. It's HelloFresh.com slash second win and get 50% off. You got the Hello Fresh lettuce wraps. Second Wind family, what's good, man? Welcome to another episode of the Second Wind Podcast. I am James, here with the best co-host in the world, the one and only Already, Mr. J man. Mills. And today we got a guest for you that if you got the assignment of guarding him, you got to guard him from the time he wake up to the time yep. he brushes teeth to the time he go to the damn stadium when he in the car, when he changing the radio, you should be in the passenger seat. Preach. 
when he get to the damn, when he get to the locker room and tie his shoes, you should be right next to him. When he get yep. in the gym, he got in the gym range. Mr. Cam Johnson, Brooklyn Nets forward, is in the is on the show today. Appreciate Yo, you coming on, you, brother. Appreciate y'all having me, man. Of course, thank man. you. Appreciate, appreciate y'all having me. I know you're pretty busy, man. So we really appreciate you hopping on, man. Of course, of course. Yo, hey, this is a big milestone for us because we usually do football players yeah. and like entertainers and stuff. So you are first hooper ice, that's man. been the guest. Let's talk hoops. You know Breaking what I'm saying? Hype. We Breaking got a hops. we got a hooper who's a host. I bust his ass whenever I get the chance never. to. Never, All right. never. I'm gonna have to see them. I'm whenever I get the chance, I bust his ass. But now that we got a hooper guest, it's a it's a big accomplishment for us. So. First of all, man, how is it being here, man, acclimating to this? Like, it's a whole new environment coming from Arizona to the city. Like, like I said, we were just talking before, like, you were sub you from the suburbs, so it's a little different. It's a whole new world. Yeah, explain to me how it's been for you. It's been interesting, right? So, you get traded in the middle of a season, and I, I, we were on a road trip at the time in Atlanta, day eight of a nine-day road trip. So, God, you got damn. a suitcase full of dirty clothes, an outfit left. Drained. Yeah. Yes. And you wake, you know, the trade happened at 1 a.m. You know, you talking to people, slept probably two hours, woke up, got on a flight, went to Brooklyn, had physicals, had a game, practiced the next day, played the following day. So it's a really quick turnaround. Right. So mm -hmm. being thrown in New York City in a hotel, you know, it's it's an adjustment. Mm -hmm. But the city, man, it, it got it got a lot of cool things about it. And the one thing that I look at it as is, is I think and I hope that as I get older, you know, I, I can look back and be like, man, I'm glad I lived in New York in right. my late 20s. Like, that was For dope. Sure. But it's a change. Yeah. It's a change. It's a big concrete everywhere. People <laughs> everywhere. Tra people bikes, drive people crazy. People drive crazy. Crazy. People drive crazy. Traffic everywhere. Um, you know, it's, it's an adjustment for sure, but there's a lot of dope stuff about it, and I'm looking forward to getting to know it. I seen a dude driving on the sidewalk the other day. Nah, that's, New York is crazy, that's, bro. That's like normal. Nobody was Hon even. Horns. They have their own rules out here. Like, you learn quick. They got their and own rules. And in Costco. Rules. When you drive the cart around, I was just in there the other day. Own rules, bro. They're not following. They just, you you get, I'm getting bumped, trying to take out my ankles. I'm like, this is a war. Costco's a <laughs> war zone. It's a war zone out here. Um, you know, just starting off, like, something that we always like to do is, like, talk about our guests' early life because normally the early life, like, how they were in the early life kind of shapes right. how they are yep. as, a, as a man once they get older. So you grew up in Moon Township, right? How was that for you growing up? Like, what was the environment like? What were your friends like? Like, what was that area like? Moon Township, um, it's just suburban Pittsburgh, man. Y'all yeah, spent some time in Pittsburgh. You yeah, know what mm -hmm. it is, you know? Um, not not a huge hoop culture of a town. Pittsburgh in general, you know, we're, a lot of football. Yeah, a lot, lot of football. football. A lot yeah. of PA good football Western, too. Western PA, yeah, bro. Shout Western out to PA, PA, man. Connecticut's trash. Now stop playing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, so uh, and, and the thing is, I'm not like we're, we weren't necessarily a, like a real like Moon is home mm -hmm. and it'll always be home. But we're not necessarily like like my mom's from a neighboring town, but my dad's from South Carolina. So, okay. you know, it's he we just kind of moved there because it was conven he needed to get to the airport and that's where the airport is. Yeah. You know, it's convenient for work and whatever. So we ended up staying there, um, and you know it, it's home. But basketball wise, friends wise, like it. it you know, it was, it was cool. Yeah. It was cool. It was cool. <laughs> and, uh, and, I, and I appreciate it. I love it. I go back now and, and, and see them people. And, and it, it takes me back. I was just there yesterday, two days ago. It, it, man, it takes me right back to middle school, high school. Yeah. Um, but essential part of my life, man. Was it like super difficult for you recruiting wise? Because like you said, PA and especially like right, Western yeah. PA. They're not looking at us right there. Huh? They weren't, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, I like it's not there. like yeah, Carolina. Like they don't really like, how hard was that to kind of get your name out? Like AAU, all that stuff? How so was that? I was a late bloomer. I grew late. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so uh, my recruiting process happened really late. Like I got my first D1 offer um, like probably after, right after my junior yeah. uh, basketball season. Okay. Damn. Right. Yeah. That's, and I that's, was getting recruited late. by, you know, some, some D1s my sophomore year and, you know, offers by the D2s my sophomore year. But mm -hmm. I was 5'11 as a sophomore, six foot. So Damn. I initially was recruited as a point guard yeah, initially. Okay. And, and, like, point combo, maybe he'll grow. His parents are tall is kind of what people were thinking. Mm -hmm. um, but it's 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 a little different, but it's changing. It's yeah. changing now, you know, and especially with social media and, you know, everything that that comes with, it's a lot easier to get eyes on people. But I think there's some pretty good hoopers there growing, coming up now, so I think there'll be more uh, NBA players coming out of there. And that's what I was going to ask you, too, because, like, being a former football player, like, I could tell you the process of, like, how to get recruited, like, going yeah. to the football world. I feel yeah. like basketball is completely, like, different. Very much. Like, do you feel like now it's easier to get recruited more than, like, when you were coming out? Well, 
right now specifically is the hardest time because really? of that six. I mean, because of that fifth year, the COVID year. Oh, so yeah. because of the COVID year in basketball, I'm sure it's the same in every sport. Mm-hmm. Um, coaches are not in a rush to look at high school kids. Really? Yeah, right. Because, because, because you could that, just yeah. go. There's a whole extra set of class of, of kids that are able to stay an extra year mm-hmm. and it's not like the scholarships increase by that same amount the scholarships are the scholarships yeah and there's extra kids in the system so with the transfer portal and the media eligibility and stuff they're really quick to just be like man we can get this person who has experience to come in and play immediately you know so as of right now if you're not like that dude top 50 top 30 it, it could be a little weird a little slow mm-hmm. um but I think that'll change after this. Co- like this is the last set of COVID year. People, I think, when yeah. they they'll, they'll get through in about a year or so. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, man, it's. I think outside of that, it, it is easier these days, and because of you know social media and stuff. No, nah, fact. So you come from a family of hoopers, right? Right. So how important was that for the, your development as like a ball player, like growing up, for you to be the player that you were? Like how well, important was that? It's what we did, man. I have three brothers. We all play. Um, my older brothers finished. The other two are still playing. Um, but this is what we did. Like it was, it was part of my identity since I was little. Like yeah. my, my middle name is Jordan. My parents gave me the middle name Jordan. And until I was five, six years old, I thought my middle name was Michael Jordan. Like, right. I was convinced, <laughs> right? Yeah. I was convinced. So it was just like, the passion was instilled in me at a really young age, a yeah. really young age. And it's just what I want to do. It's what I love to do. And, you know, I, from age three, four, I was like, I'm a, I'm playing the NBA. Like, that's that's like not only my goal, like I, I, I'm 100 percent sure. That's plan A. And I don't got a plan B. Yeah. Right. Like, I'm yeah. doing it. You know, <laughs> that's man. That's fire. When you, So coming from a basketball family, like what type of things did you do to separate yourself? Because yeah. like we worked. OK, we worked. simple as that. So, my parents used to have sheets where we go outside and shoot and they chart shots. Really? Mm. And we like they had us and, and it's it wasn't a force like parents are making you do this, making you we love to do it, me and my brothers. My older brother, because my younger brothers, you know, they came along a little later. Yeah, yeah. But me and my older brother would be in the driveway and my parents would have charts over the summers and stuff with our shots and stuff. This is what we love to do. Um so I think, you know, they they, they did a really good job of of fostering that love for basketball and a passion to just mm-hmm. compete yeah at a young age and uh you know that was that was pretty special so for you like your parents are still like that work ethic and you and your brothers was that you feel like that was like the main thing that's it that's that, the, main that the main thing that yeah. combined with the fact that they did everything in their power to give us every opportunity to be successful yeah that's a blessing right that's it i wouldn't be here without it yeah so you have to think like how many like I'm I'm just that I'm just that fortunate in life. Yeah, no, that's real. Think about how many talented people that that we all know that just couldn't make it. You know what yeah, I mean? They Maybe they're in their push. own way, but they don't they don't have the extra push. They don't have the guidance. They may make a bad decision or two. Mm-hmm. I had my parents on me from day one, like steering me in the right direction every step of the way. Mm-hmm. So I'm appreciative of them to the ends of the world because I wouldn't be in this position without them. No, that's important because Thanks. like. No, nowadays is like for him saying what I did to get here is work. Mm-hmm. You see so many kids like there's their social media, this yeah, social bro. media, that. And it's like they not putting in the work. The it work. seems like you was like your parents are like, yo, this is what you got to do to yeah, get and here. They're on me. If I was slacking, they're That's on me. That's what I was going to ask you. What was the accountability like? A bunch of brothers that hold each other accountable. Very much period. so. And we are a family. Like, so there's about four years in between each of us. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it's never a direct competition in terms of like, we could never actually compete with the one above us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I could never beat my brother one on one until I got to the point where he's like, I'm not playing you no more. Like, you know, yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> when he was like going, finishing up college, I was going into college. He's like, I'm done playing you. So right. I, my record against him is terrible. <laughs> my little brother at Penn State, yeah. I play him. If I play him one on one a hundred times, I'm winning a hundred. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm making him a dog. Though. And he he'll hear this because uh, side note. Now he's been going on these interviews and media days talking about, yeah, I beat him in post ones. You know, I'll oh, get him here, man. I'll get him there. Let me set the record straight. Set it straight you have fool. not beat me one in yeah, ones in years. <laughs> I don't think you ever have. He might have lucked up and beat me in a game to five like one, one time. time. He's shooting just okay crazy shots, but he always you know, no, he he's not. I know his moves. I I I can get into his head. It's oh, an older brother advantage, and so that's just how it was in our family. But we're always competing with each other. You know, like whether it be like, oh, I I did this, I did, you know, and it's just brotherly love. It's sure. how we push each other. So that's how we, that's how we do it. Hold ourselves accountable. Like my little brother. This is the funniest thing. So, um, 
you know, I always thought I would play in the league. I always thought this is what I would do. Yeah. But my, uh, you know, I grew late. I was a late bloomer, mm-hmm. so everybody passed me by size wise. So it got to a point where I'm I'm little as a freshman in yeah. high school, sophomore in high school, where the NBA to everybody else was a non possibility. To yeah. me, I'm still thinking. I'm still yeah, going. Like, yeah, I'm, sure. I'm never giving. Like, I can you grow, never thought like, damn, right? I'm I, little. I know what I know what I can do. I just you know need to grow into myself. Into yourself, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know. Um, but to the people around me, yeah. If I were to go back to high school and tell my friends, I'm I'm guaranteed to be in the league. They would laugh. That's crazy. So that's how I feel like most of it. Like no one right. believes, no one believes in you. Yeah. I didn't care as long. You know what I mean. <laughs> but my little brother one day, man, I was probably a sophomore, junior in high school, and we're talking about this: who's better than who? Because this is what we always For do. For sure. He looked at me straight in the eyes as like a seventh grader and said, "You play JV as a freshman. You a freshman and you play JV." And that shit hurt. That's, that's that shit hits. I said, man, <laughs> I was ready to swing on him. <laughs> Now so that's, that's, just, that's just what we do. To, yeah. You know, that's that's how we push each other. Yeah. And another, um, actually, going back to what you said before, in terms of like the um, the fifth year COVID year and like yeah. the recruiting process, like I feel like our generation, because we're almost in the same age, when you're the top high school basketball player, you go to one of the top schools. But yeah. now, you know, I feel like the landscape has shifted, right? So yeah. how do you feel like about guys going to the G League or maybe going pros overseas before they go to college? How do you think it affects the game? Uh, what the game overall or, or the, the college the college, college game? game yeah you know i think it's it's up it's up to i think it's actually on the schools to continue to provide platforms especially with nil and stuff mm-hmm. platforms for 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 young guys to learn to help them uh build their brands, mm-hmm. yep. help them make money and, and succeed in life. And that's the point of college, like completely different from, from our, yeah. you know, from our days in college, which is crazy to very think about. Different. Like, very different. It's quick. The ch- that change happened quick to the point where we don't recognize the system as At the all. one we played in, but it's just different. Like when we, when we went to college, we learned how to, we, we grew up. Mm-hmm. And part of that growing up was just learning independence, learning how to be held accountable, learning how to be responsible for your own actions, and then also competing at the highest level. Um, so now you add in this NIL stuff and all the nature that comes with that. And, and there's some there there is some personal brand elevation that comes along with that mm-hmm. that schools, you know, have to offer have to offer their players. Yeah. Um, but I think I think it's great to have options. Facts. Mm-hmm. Whether it's overseas, G League, I think it's great to have options because not every path works for each individual player. That's very right. true. You know, absolutely. So I think it's great. Mm-hmm. And you know, you balled out in high school. Like it probably helped that you went from five eight to like what were you six six when you graduated? Yeah, <laughs> like, it probably helped that sport. you went from five eight to six six. Um, you ended up committing to Pitt. Yeah, right. And you talked about their brand of basketball, like getting back from the plane and going to Maui and doing the box out drill or four hour long defensive practices, things like that. Do you feel like, like how much do you feel like that helped you as a basketball player? Like just toughness wise. OD. Yeah. OD. Man, that that's the Hawaii story is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Tell that story. Tell that story yeah. Okay. So, uh, we played in Maui my freshman year in the Maui Invitational. Great mm-hmm. tournament, you know. When we left Pittsburgh, it was 19 degrees and snowing. Me and Ryan Luther, my my, my freshman year roommate, he played at Hampton in, in Pittsburgh. So he's a local kid, too. We were like, bro, do we bring a jacket or we, do we just sprint down the hill in, like, our sweats? Because we're not going to use a jacket the rest of the trip. Mm-hmm. So we left the jacket and sprint down the hill. <laughs> yeah, we were yeah. mad excited. We pull up to Maui, 70 to, 75 degrees, 80 degrees, sunny, beautiful. You know, they give us the, uh, the the little, like, necklaces with the flowers on them. I yeah. forget what they're called, mm-hmm. lays or something. Yeah. And, you know, it's all it's all cool and good. Yeah, yeah, right? Sweet. They, they, they get the suitcases, put them on the bus. We get on the bus. I'm like, ah, oh, like, this is nice. Coach walking on the bus. Straight to practice. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> Can I go to what hotel? do you mean? Damn. No, straight to the gym. That's we get wicked. to the gym. It's a gym in um, on the island. And it's not the one that we're about to play in. And we get in there. The lights are off. We turn on the lights. Bats go flying everywhere. One hoop <laughs> is like crazy. At, we had a walk on that really never dunked. I don't ever seen him dunk. He gets the ball. Back scratcher. Boom. Oh, I was so like, bro, this hoop needs a measure. So nine foot, nine yeah. foot six hoop. Bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Shit, you be dunking on. It was funny. Whoa, it was whoa, funny. Whoa, but whoa, whoa, one whoa. of the first, like, I'm feeling terrible, like, like fresh off the flight. Like, my, my, I'm not ready to. I'm not ready to go. Right. Yeah. First drill, box out drill, where you, two people on the blocks, two people on the elbows. The blocks have to box out and get the rebound. <laughs> that shit is you have terrible. to get like three in a row or something. And if you if if you're not getting if you're not getting out, you're just gonna get more tired. Yeah, you just keep which going. Is, oh, and damn. they call it the so frying keep, pan. So you now you're in the frying too. pan. Yeah, because oh you're tired. 
and you're just stuck because you're you're getting worse. Yeah. So Ryan and I got stuck in the frying pan. I, I land fell land on my elbow, banged up knees, <laughs> that shit and it's crazy. just man, gut check. It's a lot of gut checks yeah. that we had, and it's really all I knew about college basketball. So I just was like, I'm I'm, you know, this this is what I have to do. Facts. Yeah. But I look back. I don't think anything can be as difficult as those days, like my early freshman those year. Grinding yeah, like days. grueling grinding. days. It's the summer, grinding. Yeah. I'm talking, I'd be d uh, full body cramp after, <laughs> after practices. In my, like... On my twin bed in the dorm room, you know how yeah. it is. Yep. Just, oh oh my gosh. how am I going to get through to the next day? I and think, I and think... we did. We, we did, you mm -hmm. know? It's, it's, and, it, and it's such a crucial step in, in being able to handle whatever this game, whatever life throws at you. Facts. Yeah. No, for like, real. Like, because in the NBA, it's different. Mm -hmm. It's very different. Like, the league as a whole understands that you can't just say, get on the line and run a million sprints and <laughs> yeah. do all this crazy stuff because we're adults. We're grown men. You can't really talk treat us, us yeah. talk to us like that. And also, like, we're investments to the organization. Facts. Like, they can't just break our bodies down and then mm -hmm. throw us to the side. Like, it just, it don't really work like that. So I think that's a big part of like the college experience, everything that becomes so valuable when you get to the NBA is because you know how to work already. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. You know how to grind. You know how to, you establish the work ethic. So that was huge. Like those years at Pitt, like I walk into the arena now and just like it, it smelled the same. Like it put me right back in that mode, like fight or fly. <laughs> yeah. man. And then you talked before, um, like you said, you were at Pitt. Yeah. You actually you also had like four surgeries there. You dealt yeah, with some yeah, adversity. Yeah. And then you end up transferring to UNC. Yeah. Um, which is obviously a, probably a hard decision to do. Very. But do you think that decision was very key to make it to the NBA? Or did you feel yeah, like the time at Pitt just ran its course? I felt like that key was that 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 decision was was very important, right? Because the one thing I understood is that winning complements everything else you do. Mm -hmm. So if I was doing, if I was putting up solid numbers on a team that wasn't winning, you don't really have much of a chance unless you're super elite. Right. right. And then if you're super elite, they're going to question, why aren't you winning? Damn. I had some teammates at Pitt. We didn't have a great year in my last year, right? We were 4-14 and 14 in conference, 16-17 and 17 overall. I had two teammates, Mike Young and Jamal Artis. Numbers crazy. Mm -hmm. They both averaged 20, like seven board, like boards, assists. They had stats. Mm -hmm. But it's like our team didn't win, so they're not getting the shine the same way that they would if we were winning. Mm -hmm. So not only that, it's like I wanted to compete for a championship. I wanted to feel that in my college career. Like all that work, like I'm, I wanted to compete for a championship. And the reality of the matter was at that time, our pit team was really just going through a whole program rebuild, just mm -hmm. naturally is yeah. how it goes. And so I just thought it would be best, man. And, and so I put at the top of my priority list a team that gives a chance to win the national championship. And I thought I found a good spot in North Carolina where I could play a role on a team where I could fit in with the guys, complement what they have going, and elevate myself and compete for a championship. And I thought we were in position both years to do that, although it didn't work out. But that's life. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Y'all had great teams there, too, Great. Man. We were yeah. good. They were, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Dogs. That That's crazy to think about, though, like the process. And he was talking about – um like you can still play good, but if you're not winning, they're like, gonna is, question you. Yeah, they're questioning. That's you. real though. That, that's, that's how it is. Yeah, though. yeah. yeah. I've never really heard like that. Ba so like that, basketball, the, like that. The the stage of North Carolina, and I was asked this during pre-draft in interviews. Like, mm -hmm. do you think you'd be in the same position if you stayed at Pitt or if you, like, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, straight yeah. up? And I said no because I think the stage gave me a, a more opportunities to showcase. I'm not a, the flashy player. Right, you know what right, I mean? right, right. I'm not wowing you doing the crazy stuff. I, my whole game is just trying to be solid, make the right play, do this, do that, and that stuff. I do think shines a lot more when you're on a bigger stage mm -hmm. and, and on a winning team. Right. Um. You know, and then 2019, right? Yeah. You get drafted 11th overall. Yeah. Which at the time, a lot of people are like, "Damn, like he's going." 11th I got an overall. F. It's not. It's. It's. Yeah. A I F got grade. A F grade. A consensus F grade. <laughs> really. From the analysts to the That's, experts. See, them, yeah. them motherfuckers they mess up everything. all the time. But you you face, like, like you said, you got an F. So that's, like, scrutiny there. And then yeah, it's, I like... I never got an F in my life before that. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> but, like... That's crazy. Even, like, when you got to pit, people were like, yo, like, he's yeah. not, like, a big pit. Like, you face a lot of scrutiny. And a lot of times, like, you had to, like, kind of just relax and be like... I'm st I'm that guy, but everyone else might not think so. Like, how was that for you? Where you always got like that chip on your shoulder? Where it's I like I loved it. It's like free motivation. Yeah, I loved it. On one hand, like it's free motivation because, on one hand, I don't care. These these people are very inconsequential to my life. I don't Actually. see these people every day, you know, and they're not really coming to my face and saying anything. Yeah, so they online. just behind. Yeah, 
keyboard warriors. Yeah. All that BS. Yeah. And they've been doing it for so long, like that pit stuff. Like when I signed with Pit, and granted, like I didn't have a ton of power fives. I would have had I gone prep. I would have had a lot more. Like I said, I was a late bloomer, so mm -hmm. all these coaches catching on late, and it's cool. Yeah. But I signed with Pitt because Coach Dixon, you know, he he thought like you know he was like this, he could do this, and right. I was like, thank you, Coach. I appreciate the belief. I'm coming. I'm you know I'm I'm all in, and so immediately you know it gets back to me that people are saying crazy stuff, and you know I didn't care. Mm -hmm. It didn't bother me. Like truthfully, it didn't bother me. And it's just free motivation, man, because there's nothing better than than having that doubt and and then people shutting up, right? I ain't no better for nobody. There's no better just, feeling. And I also feel like you're an anomaly too, bro. Like you did, like basketball, we always see the one and done person. But I'm you a five did, and done. You did five years, went through four surgeries. Like yep. you've been through the mud and still got drafted first round. Like that's that's yeah. not, people don't do that yeah, every so day. I was going to leave. I thought about leaving after my third year at my last year at Pitt. I thought about it just... Why not? Yeah. And then I was like, you know, let me do one more season, uh, transfer, do one more season, have a good season, and submit myself as a draft pick. I don't know where. Just try to really push that envelope. Mm -hmm. Take a year serious and hoop. And and so I did that. I got to Carolina. Had a in, I, knee surgery right mm -hmm. off rip first, before first game. Mm -hmm. Went up for a dunk. I hit out of the air. Landed funny. Meniscus. You know what I mean? I'm like, man, you got to be kidding me. Uh, get back to play. You know, I had some hip issues. I had to get resolved. So I, I decided not to go into the draft after that year. So I'm going into my fifth year. I just had a knee surgery. I had a shoulder surgery earlier. I had two hip surgeries. It's crazy. But the bottom line is I felt better physically going into my fifth. So honestly, the stress of, of being drafted was lifted off my shoulders just because I felt healthier. And I was just appreciative of that. So I came into my senior year like, I don't, I don't, it's, it's not going to phase me what happens. I'm, I'm just excited to play basketball mm -hmm. with my guys. We have a good team. Um, and so, so I think that mindset, you know, in retrospect really helped me cause I didn't feel that stress. I, I talk to a lot of guys nowadays that might find themselves on draft boards Yeah. and, and you can, I can, I can, you know, the stress is tangible when you talk to them, like you can hear it in their voice. You know, if I'm talking to face to face, I can see it in their body language. It's like, they want to protect like if they're mock drafted at uh 35, you know, early second round, they want to protect that. They want to push that up. Yeah. And so, and maybe you have a family member or two in your ear, like we need you to. So it's like, I can feel that. And, and that's tough. That's yeah. tough to deal with. Like the game already has enough stress that, that that adding that on top is difficult. I see it and even in my little brothers. I think the fact that I'm in the NBA may put more stress on them oh, yeah, because they want to see the immediate gratification because yeah. they see it. You know, when I was in college, I wasn't even thinking about it. It was like next day, like, what can I do to get better? You know, I'm really appreciative of where I'm at. Like, this is a big step. Like, even playing at Pitt is a big step for for, for a kid from the Whippeal. Um, and so, like, let me see how far I can push this thing. So I think just that one day at a time mentality um, that just enjoying the process of my senior year. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I, I, I left college with five years played and a couple surgeries and you know i played i played well enough my 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 senior year that i can go to the gms and and my agent can take analytic sheets where i shot the ball well and my, my all of these splits were good and all yeah. of these mm -hmm. analytical measurements were good and that stuff is undeniable mm -hmm. so they can say you're this you're that you're that and i said look at the like there's production look at the production so yeah. that backed me so much in the process that that's what helped me get you know picked where i was picked well, that's yeah. amazing bro talk about that Duke Carolina rivalry, because being a player in it like has to be ridiculous. Every, obviously, we see it, but like, yeah, it's different. What is so I would call it the biggest rivalry in sports. Yeah, I would. Mm -hmm. At Duke Carolina basketball, schools are separated by fifteen miles, fifteen minute drive back and forth. Yeah, um, and just history in both programs, mm -hmm. and, and at any given point the the record between the two teams is about even. So it's about as even as a rivalry as you can get. Um, and man, just the, the experience of those games. So I, I played against Duke eight times in college, six of them at, when I was at Carolina, yep. I played two at Duke, two at Carolina, two in the ACC tournament and all those different forums to play that team in is, it's a heck of an experience, bro. Like, yeah. um, you play at Duke, small gym, yep. intimate, way more people in there than there should be <laughs> loud. Yeah. We lost one time at at Duke when I was at Carolina, gut-wrenching. Yeah. Bottom. Yeah. I'm literally talking about, I kid you not, I close my eyes and I can I can look around the gym. I remember standing at half court. There might have been a minute left and we're down six. We're up 15 in the second half. Damn. And I was like, man, is this hoop, is this hooping for me, man? This really? is a bad feeling. It was my birthday too. 
Oh, no. oh damn. damn. So I'm thinking at Duke up 15 in the second half. Yeah. And I felt like, man, what did I, where did I go wrong? Like, how do, I, I missed a couple threes in the second half that I probably should have hit. I'm like, this is on me. That's crazy. And it's just, it's like, it's a low. Yeah. And then, you know, we played there again my senior year. They're number one in the country. We're number eight. It's a mid February game. Uh, Obama's courtside. Court you know, yeah. People oh, are that's crazy. Zion busts the shoot the first play of the game. And oh, we, yeah, steam, yeah, we beat them. We easy. Light work. Yeah. Four minutes left in the game. Crowd goes quiet. People are starting to leave. And when I when I tell you the extreme of the loudest environment I've ever been in, where the floor is shaking underneath your feet and the words you say evaporate in thin air like you're not even speaking. Yeah. To a dead pin drop silent crowd with game with game left to play. So it's like that's a great feeling. Great feeling. But I feel like as a hooper though, those are the games you want to play in. Like I still on the road. Yeah, like I still remember when Austin Rivers pulled up. And hit that like I, like those moments on like the those road. Games. Yeah, it's crazy. On, those on the road wins. And there's nothing like them. Um, we played them at at home, down big. My junior year, came back, beat them. Crowd was going crazy. We played them at home. My senior year, senior night, college game day. That's lit, man. I'm students lined up from 6 a.m. outside the arena. We're taking laps around the arena, giving them high fives. Like just really memorable moments. Damn. Speeches. We beat them. You know, it's great. Then in the AC tournament, my senior year. I missed a buzzer beater to beat them. Mm -hmm. They they were a full strength. We were at full strength. Back and forth game, really good game. I had I had a, a shot with ten seconds to go. I stepped back three when we were down one. Looked perfect coming off my hand, and I missed. Like I, I thought it was going in, bro. And like bro. again, just hits you deep, right? Yeah. So the 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 rivalry itself, like you, I can remember damn near every play from every game. Man, your storytelling is yeah, that, that, crazy. That was immaculate you right was there. telling that story about the floor shaking and yeah, then the I'm there. Right I just, there. I'm just my like, eyes and I'm there. I, 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 I feel like I'm there. Fuck, I, I want to be a hooper. <laughs> Your I ass. gotta close my eyes and I'm there. <laughs> nah, I'm some shit. That's nah. the thing about hoop too that I appreciate. You know, Penn State. I was at the Penn State Whiteout, yeah. mm -hmm. and it's the crowd, hundred thousand plus people. Everybody wearing white, and, and there's just a roar in the arena. That's a different but, environment, too. Right, and it's crazy. But the thing about hoops is it's a really personal, intimate environment where yeah. there's interaction. The fans are right in your face. They're saying stuff. It's like You're shooting everything's on top of you. Right, right, right. Your face. is 10 people on the court. Everybody's face is visible. Like that's the, that's the thing about hoop that uh, you know you can really appreciate as a competitor that like it's very personal. Mm -hmm. So you end up um, with the Suns, man, uh, yeah. being traded that same day. Uh, you got drafted by the Timber. Yeah, yeah. The Timberwolves, but it was already. Knew, it was, yeah, it, it was the knew. Timberwolves made the pick on behalf of the Suns, okay. basically mm -hmm. just NBA, you know, semantics. And then you end up with the Suns. Talk about your growth as a player from your day one as a Suns player to your last day, your growth as a player. Like what went into that? You understand the game. You start to learn what the NBA is about. Mm -hmm. So there's this thing I call uh, um, that I that I like to re refer to, that is like um, an NBA type uh, awareness boost that you get. Like it's like an enlightenment that yeah. when you get to the league, um, you suddenly start watching like college basketball. And you're like, man, what are they doing? Because <laughs> you just when you get to the NBA, you just watch so much basketball that you just start to pick up things. You know every little detail about the game more so than you ever did before mm -hmm. basically so it's funny because i'll go and sh tell my little brothers these things but i don't trip because i don't expect them to understand it because it's really hard to understand until you've actually seen it right so early on in those pickup days early on in those training camp days some things just have you like what was that so then right. you go back break it down oh that's just oh that's what's going on here oh that's why so and so made this decision right. then you understand how basketball is, is played at the nba level right. right and there's tons of different ways to play basketball but nba you know is the style of play in the nba is pretty consistent across all 30 teams and mm -hmm. you know we like to say it's the best it's the best basketball in the world yeah um but man it's that that adjustment period when I first I was older, yeah. so that was definitely very beneficial to where I, I could slide in and find a way to make an impact yeah. enough to be to to be in the rotation. Yeah. So I'm playing from from the jump, and uh, you know at first I'm just standing there shooting threes, playing defense, and my goal from there is always same thing with high school, same thing with college. I'll start with shooting threes because you know I know I can fall back that's on that. That's do, why yeah. I, that's, that's how I became do, a three point shooter because I was smaller than everybody, so mm -hmm. I couldn't do the other things. Then I, as I worked on the other things, as I grew, as I got stronger, as I got smarter, I was able to do everything else on the court. 
So that's kind of how I view my career trajectory is I, I tried to be as effective as possible and then work, work on my game and grow it. Like I'm mm -hmm. not out there trying 800 moves and shooting crazy step backs my rookie year <laughs> right, 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 because right. I'm trying to be solid first, mm -hmm. solid first, playable first in order to gain that leeway. And I think over my over my couple of years in Phoenix, I was able to gain more and more and more of that to the point where, you know, I felt really good about my game being traded to Brooklyn. And then Brooklyn offered myself and, and Mikhail Bridges a big time opportunity to show what what we've been working on the last four or five years. Yeah. And I think it's great because it's just a step in and going into this season too where I'm just I'm working, man. I'm trying to add things. I'm trying to develop things and, and just become a more complete, better overall player. Yeah. Talk about that 38 point game. Yeah. Like that nine threes. That was Snapping, like bro. like just seeing you, you seem like a just a real chill, mellow dude, but watching uh -huh, that that's game, funny. yeah, watching that that's game, that's a good observation. That, I mean, that's what it seemed it like, you know. Chill, but yeah. watching that game, I it was, was like not chilling, talking mellow. Real, yeah. It was like a different cam. Like that yes, game was like yes. you was like pissed, like all right, y'all won't play mad. with me because y'all you had that interaction so, with uh, Julius. Yes, yep. yes. So it was like a different cam. Explain that. So, so, I'll, so that was right after All Star break. It's early March, and I feel real good about the game at this point. Yeah, mm -hmm. the game had slowed down. I'm probably off the break, and it's only about five, six games. But I was averaging about twenty. Yep. You know, a couple assists. The game was slow, and I was understanding it. Right. Shoot, I was, like forty six percent from three. What man? Just I, I felt so comfortable out there, and it's That's, a great man, feeling. Gotta be a great so center. I go to the New York game, feeling good about my game. You know, no pressure, no stress. Like, one of my first plays out there, Julius does a pump fake, puts his shoulder in my rib, knocks the wind out of me, you know, hurt hurt my rib a little bit. So I left to go get x-rays because they were yeah. worried. Yeah. Like, you know, they just didn't want me to play with a broken rib. You know, off rib. I was good. You know, they said I had some, you know, just a little cartilage. You know, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. Put a pad back on, go back out there. But it made me mad. Right. And I, I usually don't, like you said, I, I'm pretty mellow on the court. Chill. You know, I just like to be in my zone. You know, I have a window of emotions I like to stay in. You know, you get too 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 hyped sometimes, and you let it get out of control, and and you just shot an air ball three feet over the rim. You're too hyped. <laughs> right. Settle down. Calm your ass down. Yeah, right. yeah. So I come back in the game in the second quarter. I missed the first quarter, basically all but two plays. Second quarter, basically immediately when I get in the game, I'm driving left, just go for a little layup, and I get I get hit in the quad. I take a knee to the leg. Mm -hmm. Right, and I was like like that that hurt bad. And so I'm like, I've been in the game five plays, bro, and I take two licks. Like, this is not this this, they this not going my way right Facts. now. So I go to the free throw line, bro. My legs hurt so bad, I, I bricked the first free throw. Like, I I think I hit part backboard. <laughs> and I'm like, come on, man. It's like, lock, lock in. in. So I yeah. hit the next one, right? I get a little midi a couple seconds later. I miss it. But I'm like, nah, wait. My jumper feel good right now. So I get, like, two threes to get going, a layup to get going. And I probably go into halftime with, like, 10, 11 points. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I played one quarter. I got a couple points. Like, I'm cool. Then I come out in the second half, and I'm 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 still pissed. And, you know, I'm, I'm fighting with some of their players, and it's getting chippy, so that's just <laughs> elevating that. Yep. Right. And then I just hit a point where I'm just like, all right, bro, I, I got a couple shots, and the, 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 it was going. Then I had that little scuffle with Julius. Julius yeah. I, don't, I don't know what I said. I, he didn't like it, right. but he kind of came at me, but that got him thrown out. That dig it, yep. Right, so yep. we're down like ten or something in the third or fourth quarter, and then I'm just like, I'm gonna just keep shooting because I feel like everything, every shot I shoot is going in. And so I just rode that wave, bro. And that last second shot, um, I wasn't tripping. I was impressed. I was just locked in. And Bur uh, Burks missed a free throw, and the ball kind of came towards me. Mikael, uh, we kind of tipped it. Mikael grabbed it, passed it to Campaign. Campaign drew up the court, and I hang back, yep. right? Yep. And you see me wipe my hands because yep. I was just going for the ball, and my hands were sweaty, <laughs> right? So I'm wiping my hands, and I'm, like, looping behind him. I didn't have to say anything. Campaign knew where I was. Like, he... He had like 17 assists that game, bro. Right. Yeah. Damn. So he's like, wipe. I'm wiping my hands, and and they, the whole Knicks team just kept flooding towards the hoop, and and left me. So I come around. He pitches it back to me, and I catch the ball. I get. I say, oh, I I can line my feet up because I can see the clock above the hoop. And I, my only thought at this time is, don't miss short. <laughs> right. Do not. Yeah. <laughs> Don't miss short. don't be a punk. Don't miss short. Don't leave it That's short. That's a bad way to go out. Right. You're gonna go out and miss long. So I just let it fly. Banked it in. <laughs> That's fire. Banked in. I was I like, wasn't, yo. I wasn't thinking. It felt good when you left your hands though. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. But <laughs> I wasn't like like the only thought was don't be short. 
let it go. Wow. Yeah. And I'm I like I it's quick, right? So it's like yeah, was nothing going on in my head, but just watching the ball, like. Then it went in that and I was turned up. Slow motion shit. Yeah, and then I was turned up. Like I can still, like I said, I close my eyes, I can still see it all. And when I tell you, my teammates were like, "Who is this guy? Like right. this? He's acting you so acting different." different. He was on another, I was just was mad, bro. Different. I was mad. Like I, I don't, I don't. That's I think about this now. Yeah. Like, how sustainable is playing at that level of anger? Because mm -hmm. I've never been like an angry. Like right. I'm going out there crazy. Because like I said, you get too hype, you throw the ball over the hoop. Facts. You're outside of yourself. You can't really play outside of yourself. Mm -hmm. But there's something to that that I've been thinking about. Like, all right, like, like. Playing angry, like playing if you play with, with that emotions, with those emotions, dances. like it's hard to just fake them. But when you, whenever you can get them, like in real time, like yeah, let, yeah, 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 like playing that emotional range that where you feel in control. Facts. Yeah, you see, like a lot of guys turn into that like alter ego. Alter when ego, playing, bro. They you know, step right, right. Like, a different they person when you step off, on the court. Right. That's like that's where I feel like you were at. Like the yeah, Kobe, I was like not being you myself. Fight his jersey. Yeah, you, was, you hit a different. I was not being in a normal range. Like my teammates were saying and everything. I was, I was, I, I just, I was mad. Yeah. yeah. But it was, a, it was a fun game, man. And the unfortunate part was that shot I took to the leg ended up being a little more serious right, and yeah. I played on it and, and it, it, it took me out for a couple of weeks which to me was really frustrating because like I said even take that take that game out I was I was on a little bit of a heater like the game was slow so man that was a little frustrating to, to feel that kind of momentum and then to be out for three weeks Yeah, and but then, it's alright it's, it's how the game goes yeah, you know what yeah, I mean how I, the game goes. I know you've been injured before obviously playing football there's no way around it's it ups yeah. and downs so you just gotta take you just got you just gotta be able to roll with the punches you gotta be able to withstand the highs and lows and, and be able to uh, correct correct course when you're off and ride the wave when you're, when you're, when you're feeling it absolutely right and you know you got traded February of yeah. this year right yeah. so you got traded and I feel like y'all son's team had so much camaraderie. Mm. Like, it seemed like y'all was like family, goddamn. Yeah, close like, damn near family. Yeah, so that's the cool thing about it. And that's uh, that's why I have so much appreciation for my time in Phoenix, man. Because the... And I actually... So, I got we the last game I played as a son was in Barclays mm -hmm. against Brooklyn. And the media people that were in the locker room were like, what's... Were asking me before the game, what's the key to the Suns team? Like, where, where do you guys... Like, you guys always look like such a poised group. Where does that come from? And I said, man, the opportunity to play with the bulk of these guys for four years, three and four years, um, is something that I don't take lightly. Mm -hmm. Like, we have grown as a group. We have understood what we need to do, how we need to play, and what results in wins. And there's just a camaraderie about it that's really special. That continuity means so much in basketball. Yes. With the same coach and the same players, mm -hmm. our executions at a high level, we're on the same page. So I said that's something that I really, really appreciate about being part of this team. And obviously we get traded uh, – 12 hours 24 hours later but that's all right man it's like that's part of it but that was something i really appreciated was that continuity of it because we were just so much on the same page i felt like so i had only played ten, i'd only played 10 games i think yeah. nine ish games since um i came back from knee surgery knee i missed surgery. 40 games from that right. i played the first eight and then i played a nine when i came back mm -hmm. and in those 17 games i felt like we, we were doing really well really good, you yeah. know what i mean and, and we had a lot of injuries so our record wasn't great but in our last you know 15 12 games before that we had probably two losses you know i felt extremely comfortable and confident in that group last year and i thought it was a championship group you know book that was that game against brooklyn was the first time our starting lineup played together since I got hurt. Since you, yeah. One of the first days. It was like November 5th, 4th. Damn. It was November 4th. Damn. You know what I mean? So I, was, yeah. Yeah. so I was like, we're good. And then, you know, the trade happens. That's life. Yeah. You know, Kevin Durant is one of the best Kevin all Durant, time. You, yep. you just you just got to keep rolling with the punches. And you come out here and just try to, you know, reestablish it. But like I said before, man, it's such a wonderful opportunity to continue to elevate my own game and, and, and you know, experience a, a new city and, you know, uh, broaden my horizons in, in a way. Yeah. Talk about playing with Book. Like, we were just talking before we started filming. Like, he's a killer. Like, he's competitive in everything. 2K, bowling, yep. golfing. Yep. Talk about playing with him like a dude like that. What you learn from him, yeah. Yeah, he's just, he's elite. He's elite at what he does. And I was just talking about this earlier. The the thing about it is he's a killer, but he has what it, he backs it up with results. Yep. So it's that combination. You can't have one without the other. Um, but man, he's, he, he, 
he got basically everything. You know, he's not mm -hmm. the biggest. He's not like you know, he's not like a like a Giannis or a mm -hmm. KD. T but he he got everything in his game. Yeah, you know what I mean. There's, you don't really have weaknesses. It's, it's it's hard to guard somebody that can shoot, can drive, can pull up, float, pass. Yeah. So, I mean, he's he's really just as a pure two guard, probably about the best in the game, man. He's just he's really elite yeah. at what he does. I don't even like when you evaluate basketball players, it's like different. it's like he has no weaknesses. Weaknesses. Like even toward the <laughs> you know end, like when Chris Paul was uh, you know, dealing with some injuries, he was like facilitating. He was really doing everything for real. Yeah. And he can. He's, so it's a yeah, yeah, it's it, and it's cool to watch and, and and to learn from from him and how he reads the games mm -hmm. and, and picking up the subtleties of how he finds rhythm in games and what he does and how he makes reads, you know? One thing about him, like, you know, he he just has so his he just has so much in his bag. Like when like you watch his his midi, his three, like he's able to create so many different types of shots and shots with different release points. Yes. Like if you watch closely, his midi is a really kind of a different jump shot than his than his set three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, he's just, you know, and, and there's not many guys that can do that. His midi has a much higher release point. His three is lower. But mm -hmm. he's just got to a point where they're both so effective that, you know what I mean? So it's it's cool, you know, yeah. and, I, and it was it was cool having him as a teammate for, for four years. It's and you, crazy. And you guys do so much shit that, like, it's so hard. But, like, to the normal person watching, like, like you just broke it down like that. Yeah. No one will ever know, like, his different release points. Unless you really, really watch Unless you yeah. really, really, unless you really, really a hooper and you understand like that's it's crazy that like how skillful basketball players are yeah this level um uh, that's the thing so a lot of people sometimes like nba players don't don't play hard that's the thing like i asked my mom like why didn't you ever really watch nba she's like i just you know i don't like like the way they play you know i like watching college they play harder college kids do play really hard but sometimes it's like a, it can be a nonsensical kind of hard right yeah. right NBA, like everything is just so measured out, man. And, and like you play basketball your whole entire life. Mm -hmm. And when you play defense, what's your objective? Stop the person in front of you. Stop them from scoring. Yeah. The NBA, like it, just saying stop the person from scoring is not very effective because guys' skill level is so high. Right. Good offense beats good defense. Exactly. Like a Kyrie. So the, 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 real, the real thing, the real mindset is make them, put them in positions where they're less comfortable. Mm -hmm. Make them take the shots they don't shoot as high a percentage on. Try to take, take away their bread and butter. Yeah, right. It's different from just stopping them from scoring. Yeah, that's they a different. There's a subtle difference level. between the mindset. So it's like it's just a much more calculated game, man. It's, it's very calculated, and you know you you have to have a ton of respect for your opponent every time you step on the court. Yeah, a, a respect in terms of like you know you there. Guys are pretty good at this level. Yes, damn good. <laughs> pretty good. <Right. laughs> Understatement. So you just got this contract extension. Yep. It's fire. Congrats, brother. Thank you, bro. Very Thank well you. deserved. It's big time. Um, and you know, with the Nets, it feels like you have a bigger role, yeah. right? Like yeah. you can kind of expand your game. Like I'm just thinking back to like the game two in the playoffs. I'm seeing like a different cam than I see in Phoenix. Right. Like you navigating the pick and roll, hitting the floater. Right. Like Duncan. you punching on Joel and B. Like right. Joel yeah. and B is Joel and B. Facts. Talk about like kind of your growth as a like your role with this Nets team uh, like I said everything every every aspect of the game I've been working on my whole entire career so while, I'm, while I may not be navigating the pick and roll night in and night out I'll work on it mm -hmm. so I want to be able to use it. I want to be able to um, be able to execute effectively different in different areas of the game when my number is called upon so that's why I said this opportunity in Brooklyn allows me a little more of that freedom you know CP book great players even da mm -hmm. number one pick great player. that's a lot of options around yeah, you a lot of options. where you have to like you have to in a sense sacrifice a bit of yourself to make the team a better unit so i'll i'll space the floor i'll shoot in phoenix you know i'll do all that stuff drive closeouts but in in brooklyn i i have a little bit more freedom with the ball and that's it's the way we want to play we want five guys to be able to spread the ball around make plays for each other um so you know, just being able to naturally just slide into that into that step, I think mm -hmm. was good. You know, and 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 with the comfort of having a preseason, a training camp with this group, and getting comfortable, man, I'm just looking forward to just putting my best foot forward, man, and and and, and put in the work. You know, out in front of everybody. Yeah, like the work is working. Type the work of thing. is working, and like you said, you you practiced all of those things before. And I was gonna ask you, like, how was it? 
um, from a mental standpoint, like sometimes like you played in Phoenix for all those years and now your role is very different, yeah. like drastically different. Like yeah. now, okay, you may not, they may have not expected what they wanted from you in Phoenix than like they do with Brooklyn now. Yeah. So like, how is your mindset switching? Like, okay, now they expect more from me. Like, how do you deal with that? Like not even from, think a about mental, it. from a mental standpoint. Don't even think about a hoop. Just ball. Just hoop. Simple. Just hoop. Because the more you get to think in and you get to, you know, it messes with you. So just go out there and hoop. And that's what our coaches encourage us to do, man. Go hoop. Go do what we do. We practice. We work on this. We're pros. Go hoop. Right. That's the mentality. And you play your best when you play free anyway. So exactly. like you said, yeah, playing free. You just exactly. let it fly. Mm -hmm. Play free and with that, just just compete. Play for your play for the brother next to you. Facts. So you had the opportunity to play um in the FIBA World Cup. Yep. Um, obviously you didn't get the results that you wanted, yep. but talk about the whole experience of even going out there and doing that. That's a, yeah. that's a whole experience in itself. Yeah. Cause we all, yeah, like it, it's really cool and it's the connections part of it is really cool. The ability to play alongside guys that we would otherwise never really get the ability to play alongside mm -hmm. of, to play for coaches that we may never get a chance to play for that are championship caliber coaches. You just learn through, through just being around it. You, you appreciate the game. Um, and, and, you know, you take away a lot from it. Obviously the result is not what we wanted. You know, the loss to Lithuania didn't take us out of contention. We go back to that final four game against, uh, Germany, change a couple plays around and it's a completely different story. Right. right. But that failure, I think there's a, there's a, there's a silver lining in that, you know, mm -hmm. I didn't play, you know, I, I wasn't even playing much towards the end and, and as a competitor, like I don't, you know, you don't like that. So right. it's like it gives you motivation. It mm -hmm. gives you, you know, it makes you want to work harder, play harder. It makes you, you know, going into the season, like it, it gives you juice. Yeah, you know. So sure. instead of looking at it like, man, that was, it's looking at it like, man, I can't wait to get back out there and compete. Mm -hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? Because I know, like, I know, I feel, I feel, I can do this. I can do that. I feel so. I, such a great experience, man. The people were great. Mm -hmm. Everybody that was in the organization, from the coaches to the players to the support staff, equipment people, the logistics people, just great people. So yeah. that trip as a whole, um, um, you know, is a valuable experience yeah. and, and cool experience and relationships that hopefully will last a lifetime. A lifetime yeah. experience. No, I, aren't the rules like a little bit different? A like lot the different. three seconds, yeah. like no the defense shorter three seconds, shorter three point line, but it's officiated a lot differently. And yeah. you only get five fouls as opposed to six. six yeah. So it's just a different game, man. There's no excuses. I felt like we still were, were the best team there, um, talent wise. But you, I got to give a ton of credit to G Germany and the way they played, Canada and yeah, the way yeah, they played. Yeah. These teams played, and of course, you know. Canada has a lot of NBA players, and right. Germany and has a lot Germany of NBA too, players. Like. But they 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 play really well. So you, it's nothing but credit to those guys. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not I'm not gonna sit here and take away anything from that. They earned it mm -hmm. straight up. They beat us straight up. Mm -hmm. um, but you know it's it's a different kind of game for sure. Yeah. It's a different kind of game. But they're playing the same rules that same we're playing. Rules that so playing. No excuse. Yeah. It makes you like realize like. People are like, oh, this guy can only do this. This guy can only do this. But like, it's just how it is in the NBA. Yeah, right. like but NBA that's players. How, that's the NBA though. If you, yeah. if you, if you can do this, but if you can't do it at this level, yeah, because the guy, the other guy can do it at this level, then you don't even need to be doing it at all. Right, Damn, right, right. right. So it's like the ball can only be in one person's hands at a time. So we all know people who, who are elite hoopers elite one-on-one -on -one guys right mm -hmm. but the, and you might be like why didn't such and such make it in the nba well if they're role, like if they if they if if that's their bread and butter like that's what they do that's what they do if they're a one-on-one -on -one guy or they're really good at this really good at that but somebody else is better and they can't adjust you know what i mean yeah you no, won't yeah, make sure. it yeah because you got to have five guys that fit together as a team ball mm -hmm. can only be in one person's hands at a time and and generally it's in the hands of that superstar yep. yeah. that's really good so yeah. if you're not better than him then you really aren't serving a purpose on the court you're not gonna get so, so gonna that's get the where a lot of this stuff happens where you know you see guys that are real specialty guys defenders shooters shot blockers mm -hmm. and that's how that that's how that dynamic plays yeah. out in my opinion how did sure. how did you feel when uh, Noah Lyles said that the NBA champions aren't the world <laughs> oh, here champions? Oh, I've never been asked this. No, yeah. that caused and a lot of like controversy. Yeah, it a lot of even controversy. some NBA dudes was siding with him, and then there was like yeah. the NBA dudes who was like, "Bro, are, okay, like, are, so like, how do you feel about how do you feel I'm about like, that?" Well, why was this on bro's mind? <laughs> Literally, out of, out why, of everything. Wait, <laughs> why why are you why is this bothering you so much? Right. And and what like he, this is a press conference. He just he won right. He won, he yeah. won his race. Like, bro, celebrate that. Don't right. I need to drag somebody else down. <laughs> Right. No, that's facts. Okay, but on the other hand, he's right. Like, we're not champions of the world, champions of the NBA. NBA might be the best league in the world, but that's the thing that this is my argument is one, 
why is this on bro's mind? Like, why is he saying this? Like, <laughs> right. why is he trying to flame something up? Like, we're all professional wrong. athletes. Like, why try to, fl- like, it's random. Who, I want to know who specifically is out there, like, dragging world champs. Like, who's out there, like, we're the world. I know it's said every once in a while. It's like said tongue in cheek, too, but Absolutely. I know it's said every once in a while. Yeah. And maybe some teams might have a banner that says world champions. Mm-hmm. But if I win the finals, I'm going to say NBA champions. Mm. Yeah. And, I'm sure if I say NBA champions a hundred times, I might potentially say we're the champions of the world. world. Maybe right, once, right. <laughs> but maybe not. Like I probably would, like if we would have won in the finals in 21, I don't think I would have said world champions one time. So that's where I was like, well, yeah. So I think NBA players reaction to it was one, what is bro talking about? And two, like, don't discredit what we do, though. Right. Absolutely. No facts. Yeah. Because the NBA is a global league. And then everybody's siding on one side or the other. Oh, that's just how Americans think. Well, NBA is a global league, bro. We got the best the players best from the every, best, bro. every country, saying. every continent, facts. every every corner of the earth. If if you're good and you really want to hoop, you come to the NBA. To the NBA. And a lot of the best players in our league right now are foreign players. The 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 basketball as a game is, is global. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the NBA just happens to be the hub. Right, mm-hmm. right. No fact. Right? And you see that in the World Cup. Like, okay, USA didn't win, right? But USA don't represent the team that won the NBA. It's not like we sent the Denver Nuggets. The Denver, to, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I don't I don't really get where it came from. At all. At all. I was just curious. So yeah. it's like, I, I, and I also didn't get why people were like, oh, you, these Americans aren't laughing now. USA didn't win the World Cup. Like, I'm like, but these aren't adding up. Like, these are not the same things we're talking about. Facts. So it's just, it was kind of, it's kind of weird yeah, to me. Yeah, I was me, just bro. curious about your thoughts and feelings. That's all. That what do y'all think? A, I mean, it's just like. I hear I, him, but like. He's right. We're yeah, not I, the champions I hear, of the no, world. I hear him, but like. Like the, you said, don't discredit what we're doing. But like, we're not the champions of the world. But who's out there really pushing that agenda? I Come just, on, well, I'm a world like, champ. What, what made you spark the idea to be like, y'all not the world? Well, like, when was champs? the last time he heard that? Like the Denver Nuggets just won the world, the the, the NBA championship, and who said world champs? I watched the games. Who right. was out there saying we're world champs? No, I can't remember. No, yeah, no one. But it's also like the best players on those teams play in the NBA. So yes. it's like, exactly. I, I just, I, it doesn't make sense to me. But also, it's like if. If the U.S. sent, like, Steph, Braun, Facts. Tatum, KD, and AD, and then the bench was everyone else who was there, like, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, it's, I feel like... But, bro, that's... <laughs> it's just, I just... I don't know why it was on bro's mind, man. Yeah. It no. confused me. Maybe he was just... Somebody said something to him. He didn't like it. I don't know. But I hear what he's it's saying. It's like a public though. forum. Like, I hear what he's saying. He took his time to really yeah. diagnose yeah. that. Yeah. He's, like, he's, he was on his mind for a little bit. He runs for thing. USA. <laughs> Real shit. <laughs> he's nah. not like he's running for like another country. Yeah. A European country. Yeah. But, you know? And yeah. I heard what he was saying, but he's not going to win the argument. Nobody, <laughs> like, nobody, when we talk about the NBA, nobody disrespects. And other, other basketball, other, other countries, other yeah. absolutely the world. Facts. So it was just confusing. Yeah, yeah. I agree. No, um, <laughs> that's funny. You know, from everything that you've been through, like transferring, the four surgeries, yeah. like growing late. Um, what's one word or phrase to describe like your life up until this point? You can't use adversity though, because uh, everyone uses everyone adversity. Everyone cop out. And um, we we stopped that. <laughs> you know, it's just. The, the the one phrase that has always stuck with me from the time I was little was my dad when he was he was hard on me when I was a kid and still to this day. But he always said to whom much is given, much is expected. He said that every time he's being hard on me and I you know I get down or something, he'd be like, I'm, to whom much is given, much is expected. Like if you're given a gift, you better cultivate that gift. So that's kind of a phrase I live by. You know what I mean? Like yeah. and, and and just being able to bounce back, like just the word he uses every day is just resilience. So I'd say combining those two phrases, who much is given, much is expected, and just the phrase resilience are probably the two biggest mantras that have been instilled in me because you can't control, you know, what happens to you just the way you respond to it. You can't control, you know, you'll have bad games. 82 games, you're going to shoot bad. You're yep. going to play bad, some of them. Um, but being resilient in any phase of life, in any aspect of life, can only serve you well and just understanding that if somebody's holding you to a high standard or high things are expected of you is because it's for a reason you're given a gift like you know what i mean imagine if the best musicians in the world were, were just not man i'm not good enough to do this you know I'm, man i'm not gonna do this like they, they give they're sharing their gifts with us best painters sharing our gifts with us mm-hmm. so it's like as an athlete it's like my job part of it is to 
cultivate the gifts God's given me into, you know, kids look up to us. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sure. And, and watch us. So I think that's a big part of my job. Yeah. Right answer right there. It's beautiful. And our one of our other stable questions, uh, last question, um, to anyone that's battling adversity, uh, that's watching this, trying to catch their second wind in life, what advice would you be given, uh, would you say to them watching right now? Um, I'd say just to keep hope that there's always light at the end of the tunnel, that you can get through it, be resilient. Um, everybody in life faces adversity at some time or another. Um, and I know a lot of you know, I've, I've been through things. I know a lot of people that have been through things, but man, just keep faith in something, whether that's, whether that, you know, it, you know, for me, it's, 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 it's faith in God, you know, keep faith in something, have mm -hmm. something to live for, uh, family members, friends, you know, uh, what put, put your heart into your work, you know what I mean? And just try to live by that, like, and, and try to keep everything in perspective. Yeah. For me, life's about perspective. Very knowledgeable, man. That's hey, you gonna do something yeah, after, bro, after this basketball thing? Cause real, you really bro. know how to get on this this and microphone talk and talk, talk, your talk your like shit. articulate yeah. yourself. That's what I'm saying. I need to get you as a co-host. Yeah, maybe one day, man. <laughs> I tell you what, this nigga can't check me. You can't check bro, me, bro. bro. But he got he's bigger than you though. He can't so. check me, bro. I'm stronger. I'm faster. Bro, I could. Is he I, could Come on, I got bro. it on a string, on, bro. bro. Like, man, on, man, I ain't gonna get into it. I don't even answer dumb shit no more. I ain't gonna get into it. Hey, second win family. Go ahead, like. Comment, comment subscribe. subscribe go tell anybody you need to tell Please. go tell your pet fish go tell your pet cat go tell your, your pet dog your go God tell your cat dog man. whoever you the, need the to tell the taxi driver subscribe we got comment please one of the coldest dudes in the league yes, sharpshooter can shoot it anywhere in the gym lethal shooter mr cam johnson yes sir fellas i appreciate, appreciate it, you course, brother man. i appreciate, I appreciate you. you second one family out gang